Nowak virus or norovirus as we're calling it now. We used to call it Norwalk virus, same thing. Now we call it the norovirus. I guess the city of Norwalk, Ohio, where it was named after, must have uh, complained. So they changed it. That's an infection from eating the bacteria. Causes vomiting, diarrhea, fever, and stomach cramps. The usual source is from contaminated poop from workers or raw sewage dumped overboard. You would tend to find it on green solids. How to get on the green solids from cross contamination from the people or the water. Raw shellfish, oysters, and clams, how they get it from eating that raw sewage that was dumped overboard. Then you eat the shellfish and you've got the norovirus. Ice from contaminated water or cross contamination. Eggs, ready to eat foods, water. Prevention of norovirus is through employee hygiene, hand washing, proper cooking, use of potable water, not eating raw shellfish, and a bleach solution, 1,000 parts per million. That's the only thing that will um, kill it. The standard uh, pesticides that we use will not kill the norovirus, so only bleach, 1,000 parts per million will do that. This one's a biggie, so I'm going to spend a little more time uh, on this one. It uh, seems to be growing in prominence in the U.S. and especially abroad. A healthy 15-year-old boy played a round of golf, went home. By morning, he was dead. Health officials traced a gastrointestinal illness to coolers containing drinking water for the golfers. That something was the norovirus. Officials believe a sick employee who had not washed his hands contaminated the ice in the coolers. So for you soccer moms and dads, how often do you think they clean that uh, igloo cooler uh, after the kids use it all day? Probably never. So that would be something for you to institute. So every day when you're done, clean and sanitize the, um, the uh, container. If these guys had done that, then that kid wouldn't be uh, dead. So my wife uh, Judy and I took a cruise November 2006, 16 days from Rome to Florida. Second day out, we are not able to serve ourselves anymore. They took the tongues away, so we all figured we were eating too much. But they started announcing over the PA that um, there was a, a, a stomach flu going around. And ultimately it turned out to be, I googled it because I had a sense of what it might be. So I googled it and it was all over the uh, newspapers and the, uh, the press. Um, and it was brought on probably by 10 people who uh, were touring Europe where it was prominent at that time. And uh, they brought it on board. So it wasn't Carnival's fault, but it was Carnival's job to try to uh, minimize the spread of that. And that's why they took the tongs away from us. And there were 556 passengers got sick. Some of them got sick a couple of times, plus 154 crew. And Judy and I were on there, so we didn't get sick. Um, be, well, I don't know why, because, but we didn't use the, um, uh, we didn't touch the handrails. We, if the captain's not shaking your hand, I'm not either. Um, didn't go to the public restrooms, so did our best uh, to avoid it. To me, it was great. I teach this stuff, so it was cool to watch it all go down. But uh, some people didn't have such a good cruise, for sure. A terrible virus known to spread through cruise ships strikes at Cincinnati Public School. Yeah, the health department says the norovirus has hit Mount Airy School. Nine News reporter Janelle Walton is here now with how the school is trying to protect its students. Janelle? Brendan, the district says it's following recommendations from the health department. They've had cleaning crews inside the building to clean and disinfect all of the surface areas. Students at Mount Airy School on Colerain Avenue are getting a lesson in good hygiene. They're being told to wash their hands frequently as the school tries to rid surfaces of the norovirus, also referred to as Norwalk virus, stomach flu, and food poisoning. Oh, that's what we've been working on is very, being very, very diligent 
with training the kids, reinforcing hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. Dr. Crumpton says symptoms can last anywhere from 24 to 48 hours on average. The Cincinnati Health Department says 200 of the 600 students have missed school over the past several months with the peak in absences over the past two weeks. We have been working with the parents and really with the uh, custodial staff there to d disinfect and encourage parents if their kids are sick to keep them home until they're recovered so as not to spread the virus. Experts say the norovirus is spread from person to person through contaminated food or water and by touching contaminated surfaces. The district says custodians will continue to disinfect areas that may be contaminated. The other thing is the school has been doing some um, increased amount of cleaning. We go to the areas where we think it's likely the virus may have happen during the day in the bathrooms, for example. They set off a special bomb that disinfects the area specifically for lots of germs, particularly including this one. The health department says some parents have asked the school district to close the school for a few days. Dr. Crumpton says that is not an option because the norovirus can stay in your body for 30 days, even after you have recovered. Example of parasite is Trichinella spiralis, which causes trichinosis, which um, causes vomiting and general muscle ache. Usual source wild game animals and occasionally undercooked pork. When we think of trichinosis, uh, especially if you've been around a little while, we think of it as pork, but it's also wild game animal. Now, pork you used to have to cook to 180. Now it's as low as 130 for railroad pork or 145 normally. And uh, why is that? Well, they uh, give them shots. They uh, don't feed them slop anymore, and they don't wallow around in their poop. So they've cleaned up uh, the uh, pork operation. But if you're a wild game uh, shooter, you're out there getting uh, elk, deer, whatever, uh, there's a good chance you're going to have uh, parasites in that. So what that means is you need to cook that puppy you're not getting uh, you're not eating raw a rare deer uh, for sure prevention is through thorough cooking anisokiasis is another one parasite in worms little white worms which are killed by holding food at minus four degrees for seven days so if there was some reason you thought that uh, you might have uh, parasites or worms in the fish uh, then you could kill them by um, freezing to minus four degrees for seven days, you're still going to eat the parasites, but at least they'll be dead. Chemical hazards include cleaning solutions, food additives like uh, color, coloring and, and uh, MSG, things like that, pesticides, naturally occurring like mushrooms, pick the wrong kind of mushroom, you can die, and Asakus worms that we just talked about, Ciguatoxin, which is in fish, mycotoxin, which is in uh, breads, agricultural residues like additives, colorants, flavors, source water. Some naturally uh, occurring chemicals or toxins, ciguatera poisoning, come from uh, diarrhea, vomiting. Got a picture of the fish down there to give you a visual to help you remember. C, whatever, think C, 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 whatever, the ocean. Fish high up in the food chain like barracuda eat the smaller fish, which eat the smaller fish, down to the little guys that eat the toxic algae from the contaminated reef. Prevention of ciguatoxin is to buy fish from a reputable unknown source. Why does that help? Because if you're buying from the big guys in town, and somebody has been around a long time, uh, then you're assuming, and we do a hassle plan, we're going to do less assuming and more snooping and pooping, but, uh, or not that kind of pooping, snooping and looking, uh, but we're going to, um, but you assume that 
those big companies, the Cisco's, U.S. Food Service, etc., uh, that they've been to check the the um, the ships uh, that catch the fish and that they see that everything's done properly and that they, in their um, facilities, that they're um, keeping it under proper conditions and not letting it stay there too long, etc. The toxin is heat stable. So see what toxin is a toxin meaning like poop. Uh, see, is heat stable, cannot be destroyed by cooking. Why does that matter? Because if you think you, well, see that fish has been in the uh, danger zone for too long, but I'm going to deep fat fry it, or I'm going to cook it, and I'll cook it to proper temperature, it doesn't matter. You're going to have deep fat fried poop, uh, but you're still going to get the toxin. The harmful effects of ciguatoxin can last for months and even years. Scombotoxin or histamine poisoning, seafood that's been temperature abused, caused by fish actually decomposing from poor time and temperature control during processing and storage. You know, if you have, uh, let's say, a banquet and you only have one entree, uh, and that entree is fish, you would always have to have an alternate because a lot of people are allergic to fish, and what they're allergic to is the scombotoxin or the histamine in the um, seafood now some people could eat seafood and they don't have a problem and then all of a sudden they eat your seafood and they do have a problem why might that be because maybe they're somewhat allergic to histamine poisoning but normally if you handle the fish properly then it's not a problem if you uh, allow the fish to decompose they don't handle it properly and they get too much histamine then they might get sick whereas maybe previously they never got sick So if you're sitting there eating seafood and your teeth are tingling and you got a little dizziness, nausea, you feel like vomiting, you might have scombotoxin or histamine poisoning. Often comes from tuna, amberjack, bluefish, mahi-mahi, or mackerel. And the best prevention, again, is to buy from approved sources which have handled the uh, seafood properly and, and didn't cause it to decompose. Because of a lack of supervised control, products that are homemade or fish you caught may never be used or sold in or by a food service establishment. You just don't know how the product was handled. It might have been fine, uh, but you don't know that and you can't be uh, become liable for that. Everything must come from an approved source. So you catch some fish and you bring it back for the weekend. What can you do with them? Eat them at home, give them away, but you can not use them in your establishment. So how do you monitor your food temperatures? Your single most important tool is simply the thermometer. Thermometers with glass stems must not be used when taking food storage temperatures. Why? Because they might break and then you've got both the physical contamination as well as the chemical contamination from the mercury. I have to say, in my 18 years as a hospital food service director, I don't ever remember seeing my chef calibrate their thermometer. <laughs> Somehow or other, that missed my uh, radar screen or something. Uh, how often should you do that? You should do it daily, or if the thermometer is dropped. How you do it, you fill a glass with half water, half ice. Submerge the thermometer or thermocouple probe into the water up to the dimple. Wait until the temperature is stabilized. It should read 32. Adjust the dial by turning the nut on the back of the thermometer until it reads 32. Then it must be accurate to plus or minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit. You um, pretty much can can calibrate a lot. Of the, the thermometers, when they went digital, you couldn't. But now they're making them where you can calibrate them. Otherwise, you had to throw them out. 